If I'm trying to give my visitors a way to download a bunch of images or files, I don't want them to have to go through and download all these one by one. Instead, I want to be able to click a download button and have all those files magically appear as a single zipped archive that they can download and uncompress themselves. So we're going to see how we can do that using JS zip inside of Next.js. Before we dig in, I have a course coming out next week where we'll learn how to build a full stack React application using AppRate. Make sure to head over to spacejelly.dev slash React AppRate where you can get updates and you might even be able to get early access. So to get started, I have a little app that I created that has a few images inside of an array and it also has those images dumped out onto the page. But importantly, it has this button that we're going to use for being able to trigger a download. Now, looking at the way that JZip works, we're going to create a new instance of JZip. We're going to add all the files that we want to make available to it, to that zip, and then ultimately create a blob that we're going to pass back as the response from wherever we create that download. Now, ultimately we need to be able to do that somewhere. And since we're in Next.js 13, we could probably use something like server components if we wanted, but I'm gonna opt for using API routes as I want a little bit more flexibility inside of the client. So inside of my source app directory, I'm going to create a new folder called API. And inside that, I'm going to add a new folder called archive. And this can be really whatever you want the name of that route to be. But then inside of archive, I'm going to call it route.ts. Now inside here, I'm going to export a new async function called get with all capital letters. And eventually we're going to be returning a zip file. But for now, let's just return some JSON just to make sure that our endpoint is actually working as we're working through this. So I'm going to return a new response and let's call that json.stringify and let's pass in just test true. And then for the second argument, I'm going to pass an object with a status of 200 as well as some headers where I'm going to set my content type. And again, we'll eventually be working with a zip. So we'll be changing this later, but let's just make it application JSON for now. So now if we go to our server and we go to slash API slash archive, we can see that we get that test true. So that means our endpoint is working. So now we have our base endpoint where we can start to build in that capability of being able to create a zip on the fly. So over looking at the JS zip package, let's first install that. So my project, I'm going to run npm install JS zip. And then inside of my route, I'm going to import JS zip from JS zip. And we can notice the capitalization that I have here. This is the way that they're going to be formatting it through their examples and the way that they set up their constructor. So let's just kind of follow along with, with that same example. But if we go back to NPM, we can see that they have a nice example here that we can get started using. We see that they do also have documentation, but I find that it's a little bit easier to read and copy here. So I'm just gonna copy this for now. I'm gonna paste it right at the top of my get endpoint where let's kind of walk through what's happening, where we're creating a new instance of JS zip so that we can create our new zip archive. Then we're going through, we're adding a hello.txt file with the content of hello world. We're then creating an image inside of an images folder, where then we're adding an image file inside of that. And then ultimately that zip is generated and it's zipped up so that we can then save it. Now, the biggest differentiator here is that we're not actually going to be saving this as this example has it, because this is assuming that it's inside of the client. But what we wanna do is we still wanna generate this, but we wanna make it available so that we can pass it back as a response. Now we don't have this image data locally available, especially inside of the endpoint where we wanna make sure that this is deployable as well. So let's first get rid of this image file and let's just first work with this hello.txt. So just to reiterate what's happening is we're creating a new instance of a zip, we're adding a file of hello.txt and then we're generating that zip. But again, what I want to do is I want to take the content available that's generated from this. We can see right inside of the callback function. But what I want to do is I want to take that and I want to respond back to this endpoint with that data, which is going to be that zip file. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this whole then statement. I'm going to say constant archive is equal to await zip generate async, where it's going to give a type of blob. But then I'm going to pass this archive right to this response. But because I want this archive to be a zip file, not a JSON file, I need to update this to application zip. So now if I try to open up a new tab and go back to that archive, we can see that it just downloaded that archive.zip. Now, if I actually go to that file and open it up, we can see that it extracts this hello.txt, which is exactly what we did in that example. So that was actually pretty simple, right? We were able to create a new zip file on the fly we added this little just txt file just to kind of see how this works. We were able to easily zip that up and pass it back into our response and it just works. 
Now, before we go any further though, let's actually add this back to our application. So instead of going to the endpoint every time, we can just click that button that we have already on the page. Now we could probably just use this download button as is, but part of what I wanna show you is how we're going to actually interface with that endpoint that we created. So I'm gonna replace the button with an anchor tag where what I'm gonna actually do is create an href and I'm gonna say, I wanna point that to API archive. Now, what I'm gonna also do is add a new target and set that equal to underscore blank. Now what's gonna happen is whenever somebody clicks this, it's going to open up this link, but it's gonna to try to do so in a new tab. But as we saw earlier, what happens when we go to that link is it downloads a file, it doesn't actually open up a web page. So if I head over to my app and I try to click that button, we can see that it opened up a new tab for a second, but then it downloaded that archive for me. Now, just so this still looks pretty as a button, I went ahead and I copied over the class names to make it look like a button which is certainly important when you're creating UI. But now we can see that we have a nice looking download button, which will download that archive for us. Now, moving back to our archive, what we wanna happen is we wanna create a zip file that includes all those images that we currently show on the page. Now, currently this endpoint knows nothing about any of those images. So what we need to do is pass that data to this endpoint and then take those values where we're gonna download those images right inside of this endpoint and then stuff them into that zip file so that they can have all that data available when they download it. Now, maybe in your use case, you're not gonna probably just pass in a URL to the endpoint like that. Maybe you're gonna be interfacing with some kind of service where you're going to grab that data that's generated from your server. But ultimately you need to have that data available so that you can pass it to Jam zip so I can add it to that zip. So in our example, what we're going to do is we're going to take this array of images and we're going to actually stringify it and we're going to add it as a URL parameter to our API endpoint. So let's start off by making this a dynamic string where then with the right characters, I can pass in my query parameters of let's call it images. Let's pass in json.stringify where let's pass in those images. But stringify is not gonna be enough here because it's going to have some invalid characters for a URL. So that'll mess things up a little bit. So we also wanna make sure we encode that with encode URI component, where you wanna make sure that you also complete that. But now heading to our endpoint, we ultimately wanna grab those URL parameters. So let's start off by getting our request from our parameters where that's going to be typed as an instance of request where I'm gonna create a new URL instance using new URL, where we can simply pass in our request.url, where this is going to give us easy access for a lot of the data that's inside of that, where particularly, I don't need the full URL, all I want is the search param, so I'm gonna destructure that. Then I ultimately wanna get those images from the search parameters. So I'm gonna say constant images equal to search params.get, and I'm gonna grab those images. But because we stringified that value, we now want to parse that value. So I'm gonna wrap that with json.parse. But we can see that we now get a type error because as far as they're concerned, we might get a null response or undefined, which is valid in case we don't pass it in. But let's also just add or a string just to make sure that that's happy for now. And for what it's worth in a real scenario, you'd likely wanna make sure you have error handling so that if someone doesn't pass that in, you have a different path for how that responds. But now just to make sure things are working, let's console log that out where we'll trigger the archive. But first let's make sure that we have those images. So I'm gonna now click download and we get our archive. But in the meantime, we can see that we now have those images logged out where we have access to the URL and the names. So now what I'm gonna do is for every one of these images, I'm going to loop through them and I'm going to download each of those files and I'm gonna add them to the zip. So let's start off with downloading all of them where I'm gonna say constant downloads is equal to await where I'm going to use promise.all because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to map through each of these images returning a promise that inside is going to download that data for me. So I'm gonna say images.map where I'm going to return that async function with the argument of image where ultimately I'll return that information. Now here, I wanna first grab that image data. So let's say constant response is equal to await fetch where I'm going to grab the image.url. I'm going to then grab the data for that, which we don't want to grab JSON like you might normally use. What we want to do is we want to say await response and we're going to grab the array buffer. But now once we have that data, let's return a new object that's going to include all that original image data, but let's also include the actual data. So at this point in time, we should have our images from the URL parameters. Then we should have all of our downloads, including the image data itself inside of this array that we can now loop through and add each and every one of them to that zip. So let's say downloads for each download. I'm gonna pass in my function where the argument will be that individual download. And then similarly to how we did our text.txt file, 
I'm gonna say for the file name, I wanna add download.name. And then for the content of that, I'm gonna pass in download.data. Now, before we test this out, one thing I just noticed is we actually are getting a type error for this image up here. So let's first type that out quick. Where for this image, let's now call this interface image download. Where what are we gonna get? We're gonna get our name, which is a string, as well as a URL, which will also be a string. But then we can make sure we type this out. We'll need to wrap this parameter with parentheses. And we should be able to see that no more red errors. TypeScript is all happy. And let's actually give this a try. So now let's click download again. We get our archive and that was number four. So let's unarchive that. And we can see that, well, we got our names in there and it looks like we're getting data according to the kilobyte size, but we're not actually getting our file extension. So we can even prove this by if we add JPEG to the end of Converse, for instance, we do get our image data, but how do we actually make that work? Now, if we really wanted to, we could probably add a type here and actually pass in type along with our different images. But let's do that a little bit more of a dynamic way. When we're downloading this image, we're also going to be able to have access to the headers. And one of those headers is going to be our content type. So let's set this equal to response.headers.get and let's get our content type. Then let's pass this into our return statement. But what I'm going to actually do is make that type, but then I'm going to say content type. And because what's going to actually happen is if we look at one of these images, we can see that the content type is actually going to be image slash JPEG. So what we want to do is dot replace where we're going to replace image with nothing so that it ends up just being that file extension. And of course, to make TypeScript happy, let's actually make sure we add that optional chain there. But instead of just passing in our download name, let's make this a dynamic value where we can then add our download.type. Now, to be clear here, we probably want to have a little bit more of a flexible way to do this, where we probably don't want to just replace it with image because that can be really any other kind of file. It might not just be an image, right? But in our case, this is just the easiest way to show this. And there's definitely ways that you can be able to parse that extension in a more reliable way than just doing a little simple replace. But let's test this out where let's hit our download button. And when we open up our new zip, we should be able to see that, yay, we have our file extensions where we can now preview all of our images. Now we can see that this is a pretty simple way of being able to handle this. We were able to do it inside of a serverless function. And if we're working with huge gigantic files, this might not be the appropriate way, especially because serverless functions have some timeouts associated with them where you don't want to go way too long. So maybe it starts to make a server more appropriate, but you'd still want to be able to do the same thing where you can use JSZip for doing a similar thing and maybe a node server. But for our purpose, where we know we're going to have smaller files and we can actually just download them by URL inside of the file itself, it makes for an easy way of being able to collect all those assets and then make it easily available as a single archive. Providing a zip is a better experience than spamming somebody's browser with a bunch of different downloads, and JSZip is a great way to be able to handle that. If you're ready to start digging into more full stack React, I have a course coming out next week. We're using AppRay. We'll learn how to work with databases, authentication, storage, and all within a vanilla React application, which will work in any React framework that you're working with. So make sure you head over to spacejelly.dev slash React to get updates and early access. Before you go, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.